Hi and welcome back. We are doing 7.4 trigonometric equations. I got to be honest, this is probably my favorite section in this chapter because we're solving an equation. Before we're doing identities, you're never quite sure. I mean, identities are okay, but if they give you an expression to simplify, you're never quite sure are you there or are you supposed to go further. This way, we're going to get an answer. We're going to get a number answer from this. So, actually, that's kind of what I typed in here. Um, well, one common approach is to isolate the trigonometric expression on one side of the equation, then use our experience and knowledge of trigonometric functions to find and describe a complete solution set. And I want to um, also point out, we are going to use a lot of our pre-calculus and algebra skills here. We're going to use a lot of those skills when, we, when it comes to factoring, setting things equal to zero. That's important here. So it's not like we get to forget all that. All comes together now. Okay, so example one, let me give myself more space. It says, 4 sine squared x plus 2 equals 3. Okay, so if I subtract the 2 from both sides, 4 sine squared x equals 1. Now I'm trying to solve for x. So if I divide by 4 on both sides, I have sine squared x equals 1 fourth. Now I want x again, so let me take the square root. The square root of sine squared x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. This is always important when we're solving. When we have a variable that's squared, the variable's inside a function that's squared here, so we have to look at both the positive and the negative, because the principle of square root is always positive. So we have to look at both the positive and the negative. So sine x is one plus or minus one half. Plus or minus. So think to yourself, when is sine of x equal to one half? Well, that's when x is Remember all of the values you memorized? Pi over 6, and it's at 5 pi over 6. Now it wants all the solutions to this, not just a couple. And sine is a periodic function. It's going to keep on going, right? It's going to be hitting that 1 half a lot. So not just pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 give us those values, but 2 pi later, so 2 pi k where k is any whole number or any actually integer. 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Some books may have 2 pi n, n being the natural number. And then we have sine of x equals negative 1 half. Where does that occur? That occurs whenever x is 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. And again, because this did not, didn't limit our domain. We'll see somewhere that, or yeah, the domain. That we'll see somewhere it limits the domain to, from zero to two pi. This does not limit it, so we got to say plus two pi k, plus two pi k. So these are our solutions. These are the values that make this a true statement. Feel free to pause that one. Next one, sine squared x minus sine x equals 2 sine x minus 2. So in this case, I'm going to bring everything to one side. If I subtract the 2 sine x and, so, and add the 2, we end up with sine squared x minus 3 sine x plus 2 equals 0. Now if you don't recognize it, this is a quadratic equation. We have something squared minus 3 times that something plus 2. So if it helps, we can do a u substitution. Say u equals sine x, and then we have u squared minus 3u plus 2 equals 0. And we know how to factor that. That's u minus 2 times u minus 1 equals 0. So u equals 2 and 1. We're not finished though. 
because then we go back and say sine of x equals 2 and sine of x equals 1. When is sine of x equal to 2? No one's saying anything. Ah, oh, that's because it's not possible. The biggest sign can produce is 1. So when is sine of x equal to 1? When x is pi over 2. So we say pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Every 2 pi later that happens again. And our last one here from this example, the last part of this example, sine cubed x equals sine x. If I subtract sine x from both sides, I have sine cubed x minus sine x equals zero. And I don't know if you recognize that this is a cubic equation, but if it's hard to see that, feel free to do that substitution. u equals sine x. We then have u cubed minus u equals zero. You can factor on a u, u times u squared minus one is zero. And you can factor the u squared minus one. u times u minus one times u plus one is zero. So we can set each of those factors equal to zero. u equals zero. u minus one is zero means u equals one. u plus one is zero means u equals negative one. Okay, so we've solved it down that far. We need to substitute the sine back in. So sine of x equals zero. And that occurs when x equals zero plus two pi k. When x equals pi plus two pi k. We could in fact just say whenever x equals zero plus pi k. But I thought I'd give you both of these. So I don't have to worry about 2 pi because if k is 1, 0 plus 2 pi is 2 pi. We have sine of x equals 1. And that occurs when x is pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And then sine of x equals negative 1. And that occurs when x is 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And remember, k can be a positive or negative integer, it's positive negative whole number, it's an integer, so that if k is negative 1, negative 2 pi plus 3 pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. It'll give us that negative 1 again. And those are the solutions to that equation. on to example two. Well, the nice thing about this one is it gives us a domain from zero to two pi. So we don't have to worry about that two pi k thing anymore for this one, for these two here. So use trigonometric identities, algebraic methods, and inverse trigonometric functions as necessary to solve the following trigonometric equations on the interval from zero to two pi. Okay, so we have tangent squared x equals tangent x plus six. Same thing as before, we'll move everything to one side, minus the tangent x, minus six, and tangent squared x minus tangent x minus six equals zero. And if it helps to see it, we'll do a substitution again. u equals tangent x. So u squared minus u minus 6 is 0. And that factors to be u minus 3 times u plus 2 is 0. So u is going to be 3 or negative 2. So tangent of x is 3 and tangent of x is 2, negative 2. 
And this one's going to be a little different. We're going to have to use a calculator for this. If I do arctangent or tangent inverse of tangent x and tangent inverse of 3, I get x equals 1.249. Well, let's think about that. 1.249 that occurs up here. Tangent's positive here and it's positive down in the third quadrant and that occurs pi later. So we would have 1.249 and 1.249 plus pi. What's 1.249 plus pi? Oops. I get 4.390. So two values that work there, 1.249, or from this point all the way around, it's 4.3906. Now, this next one's a little interesting, a little more interesting. Because tangent x is negative 2, if we do arctangent or tangent inverse of tangent x, we get tangent inverse of negative 2. So x is how much? negative 1.10715. But if you look back at our domain, we're limited from 0 to 2 pi. This is not in the domain. But let's take a look at what this is talking about. I think it's more like this. Okay, so here's our angle, negative 1.10715. The tangent is negative in the fourth and the second quadrants. So, if we extend that up, and if we add pi to this, we get th this other angle from the x-axis, positive x-axis up to this angle. So I'm going to take that last value and add pi and that means negative, where should I put this? Negative 1.10715 plus pi is 2.0344. That means that this part right here is 2.0344. Next step, this quadrant down here, that quadrant occurs where it was, this angle occurs where it was, or Not one pi later, but two pi later. So we have negative 1.10715 plus two pi. And that's going to be five point one seven six zero. So our solutions to this equation would be x equals 1.249, 2.0344, and 5.1760, if you want that zero. And those are the solutions to this equation. all contain from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, moving on to the next one.
Here for the next one we have 10 sine x minus 16 equals negative 11 plus 18 sine x. If I bring these sines to one side, and because nothing's squared, I'll bring uh, the sines to one side and the non sine terms to the right side. Plus 16 plus 16. We have negative 8 sine x equals 5. So that's sine x equals negative 5 eighths. So sine inverse of sine x equals sine inverse, also called arc sine, of negative 5 eighths. Now the problem here, again, we're looking at the domain being 0 to 2 pi, and knowing what we know about arc sine, it's going to give us values because this is a negative 5 eighths, it'll give us values from negative pi over 2 to 0. But we'll go with that. By the way, I am in radian mode. That's negative 0.6751. So what we're talking about is an angle down here. Going the negative direction. Now sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. So it's going to be negative in this third quadrant where the reference angle is negative 0.6751 and negative in the fourth quadrant. So what that means is we would add how much to this? If we went up like that, it would be pi, no, pi over 2, this would be pi. So what we're doing to this now, <coughs> excuse me, this is, might sound a little complicated. We had to go to get this angle, we had to go the full pi plus 0.6751. So we're looking at pi plus 0.6751, the positive, I mean I should take away that negative, this positive distance. So from the positive x-axis around to the negative x-axis and then 0.6751 further. And that gives us the angle in the third quadrant. at 3.8167 and then back over to this original location all the way around from here all the way around that means we're adding 2 pi to it so we'll do 2 pi plus the negative 0.6751 this time we keep it negative because we're talking about the negative directions 2 pi further and that is five point six zero eight one so our solutions x equals three point eight one six seven and five point six zero eight one when you look at the notes on this I did have the wrong angle in there I was doing an angle up here but sine's positive in the second quadrant so ignore that value it is down here in this third quadrant is where sine is negative okay and those are the actual values Feel free to pause that if you'd like. Okay, verify the x values given our solutions to the given equation. So we have 3 secant squared x minus 4 is 0. This just means we're going to plug it in. 3 secant squared of pi over 6 minus 4, is that 0? Well, that's 3 times secant of pi over 6. This quantity we end up squaring, that's what the squared there means, minus 4 is 0. So 3 times what? Now, secant of pi over 6 is 2. No. 
I'm sorry, it is square root of 3 over 2 minus 4 is 0. I got that wrong still. It's 2 over the square root of 3. I got to think of m versus a cosine. So this is saying 3 times 4 over 3 minus 4 is 0. So 4 minus 4 is 0. It works. We'll look at 5 pi over 6 now. 3 secant squared of 5 pi over 6 minus 4 is at 0. So we're talking about 3 times secant of 5 pi over 6. We square this quantity minus 4 is 0. Now secant of 5 pi over 6, that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Secant is negative in the second quadrant. I got that wrong again. It's 2 over square root of 3. Minus 4 is 0. So it's 3 times, but the negative squares out, 4 thirds. So 4 minus 4 is 0. So it works. x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 are solutions. The next one, cosecant squared x equals 2 cotangent x for x being pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Okay, so let's look at this. Cosecant squared of pi over 4 is equal to 2 times cotangent of pi over 4. This is going to be cosecant of pi over 4 squared equals 2 times a cotangent of pi over 4 is just 1. Cosecant of pi over 4 is square root of 2. We're squaring that amount as equal to 2 times 1. So that 2 equals 2. That works. Cosecant squared of 5 pi over 4 is equal to 2 times cotangent of 5 pi over 4. This is cosecant of 5 pi over 4 squared is equal to 2 times cotangent of 5 pi over 4 is 1. This is negative square root of 2. What we square, it's the negative will go away. So 2 equals 2. That works. Feel free to pause that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, for example four, we're going to use a graphing calculator to approximate the solutions of the given equation for the interval from zero to two pi. So I'll go ahead and get the graphing calculator. The, the uh, screen working. Okay, it's going to come in here and clear some stuff off. Okay, it wants us to show 2 sine x plus cosine x equals 0. We're fine when that's the case. What I want to point out, and maybe I shouldn't lower the screen so quickly, is that if we have 2 sine x plus cosine x equals 0, that's like saying, subtracting the cosine x, 2 sine x equals the negative of cosine x. So what we'll do is graph y equals 2 sine x and y equals negative cosine x and see where these two graphs will cross. So you're seeing stuff from a previous problem I've done with the calculator. So I'm going to graph 2 sine x, and then I'm going to graph negative cosine x. 
So I'd use the negative button, by the way, not the minus button, but the negative button down here. Okay, so I have those equations in there. I've got to check my window. Now, it says go from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll go 0 for that. And I can just type this in. I want to show you the buttons here. Maybe I can zoom out. I am zoomed out. Okay, for 2 pi, I can type in 2. And then the green or the blue second button, the caret button, gives me 2 pi right in there. So I just typed it in. If I hit enter, it'll do the decimal equivalent or approximation. I like to scale mine by pi divided by 12. Y minimum, well, the smallest Y is going to produce is a one, a negative one, but we have two times sine, so we'll go negative two, and the biggest is positive two. So we'll graph it. This first one coming up is the two sine X, and the next one coming is going to be the negative cosine X. We want to find these places where it's, where they're intersecting. Graph is intersecting here and here. So we have a tool, it's the F5 button on your TI-89 calculator. If you have something else, another TI, most of them have it. Usually it's under F5 as the tools. If you have a Casio, I really can't help you. I'm a TI guy. So F5, the fifth choice is intersection. It asks you for, um, let's see. I think I hit the wrong button. F5. There we go. First curve, second curve. Wants to know the two curves. We only had two, two curves displayed, so that's fine. Just hit enter. Left bound. That means to the left of the intersection point. Right bound to the right of the intersection point. You can scroll or type something in. And there it is at 2.66, sorry, 2.67795. Let's find the other location of the intersection. F5, intersection, first curve, second curve, and our bound. I can just hit the bound now. This can take a little bit of time. I could type something in too. I'm just going to scroll it because we're almost there. But it's important to stay on the left side of that. And scroll past the intersection. Now we're on the right side. There's the intersection at 5.81954. So those are the solutions to our first, or to this equation here. Those are the solutions to the equation. We're going to go on and try the next one. The next one has 2 sine x equals 1 minus 2 cosine x. So we're going to do y equals 2 sine x, y equals 1 minus 2 cosine x, and see where they hit each other. Back into this. I have 2 sine x, I already have it there. And then we have 1. 1 minus 2 cosine x. Now, so I have other stuff on there, but these two have the check marks. That those are going to be the two that are graphed. You can, like I said, I have uh, 17 things on this before these two, and they're not being graphed because they're not check marked. Here's 2 sine x. We saw this earlier. And then 1 minus 2 cosine x. Oh, I may need to change my window because it goes up to 3. I guess I don't really have to because there's the intersection, there's the intersection. But I'm going to just for the aesthetic value. There's my 2 sine x. And here's 1 minus 2 cosine x. 
So we see it crosses here and down here. We want to use the intersection tool again to find those places of intersection. Places that coexist. And here I'm just typing in 0 pi, because I know 0, 0 pi is about there. It'll take longer if I have a wide range, and you see how long it took. 1.99483. And the other one, x is what? Let's find out. Again, f5. Inter oops, not derivative. That's next semester. Um, first curve, second curve. There's our lower bound, our upper bound. We can just type in 2 pi if you want. That puts it way over there. And there we have it at 5.85915. I say five, nine, no, got it wrong. Five point eight one, not eight one, five point eight five, nine one five. Oops, and that is our graphing calculator, T89. Someday I may go up to the TI Inspire CAS. I have one, but they're just not as um, widely used by students. Okay, going back to the computer stuff. Example five says determine if the given value is a solution to the trigonometric function. The value um, of x is not a solution. Give all the solutions to the equation. So what we have to check is just the pi over 3. We don't have to worry about the 2 in pi. That's just generating all the other values that would occur. Okay, so it means plugging this in. Sine squared of pi over 3 minus 3 cosine squared of pi over 3. Is that going to be 0? Okay, well, we have basically sine of pi over 3. We're going to square this quantity minus 3 cosine of pi over 3. We square the cosine quantity. So this is square root of 3 over 2. We square it minus 3 times, I forgot my squared. 3 times 1 half cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half squared. So we have 3 fourths minus 3 times 1 fourth. Is that 0? Yeah, 3 fourths minus 3 fourths is indeed 0. Let's move on to our last page of 7.4. Solve the following quadratic-like equations in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. We've already seen this type of thing, but before we had to move everything over, everything's on one side now. Oh, but look at this. It's sine squared, and there's a cosine. We want everything to be sines or everything to be cosines so we can do the U substitution. It's not that way now. Is there a way we can convert one of these, the sine or the cosine, over to the other? And the answer is yes. We have the Pythagorean identities. So that's going to be 2 times sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. This is 2 minus 2 cosine plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. So it's negative 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. 
Now I'm going to divide by negative 1. So 2 cosine squared x minus 3 cosine x plus 1 is 0. Now if I do u substitution, if I say u equals cosine x, I have 2u squared minus 3u plus 1 equals 0. And that could be factored to be 2u minus 1 times u minus 1 is 0. So 2u minus 1 is 0 means 2u is 1 or u is 1 half. u minus 1 is 0 means u equals 1. So cosine of x is 1 half and cosine of x is 1. When is cosine 1 half? Whenever x is pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. When is cosine going to be 1? On this interval, only whenever x is 0. When x is 2 pi, it's 1, but notice the parenthesis here. So our solution set is 0 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. One more example to do today. Solve the equation on the interval from 0 to 360 degrees. So instead of rating answer, we have degree answers here. And give exact solution when appropriate. Otherwise, write answers to the nearest tenth. So tangent x equals cosine x. Now, tangent x is sine x over cosine x. So if I multiply both sides by cosine of x, sine x equals cosine squared x. Well, so now I have a sine and a cosine I'm dealing with. I want only sines or only cosines. So it's important to make the conversion, and what conversion should we make? Kind of hard to make the sine conversion, but we can do the cosine one pretty easily. Sine x equals 1 minus sine squared x, because cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x, the Pythagorean identity. So if I subtract 1 from both sides and add sine squared x, I have sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 equals 0. Now, if I do the u substitution, u equals sine x, then it's u squared plus u minus 1 is 0. You might look at that and say, that can't be factored. And you're right, that can't be factored. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. u equals negative 1, the coefficient for u, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 1 all over 2a, a is 1. So u is going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4. 4 doesn't look very good. u equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. We'll get our decimals out of that. So if you have negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and that's going to be 0.618. Negative 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2, that's going to be negative 1.618. So I don't have a lot of issue with the positive one. Sine of x is 0.618. So x would be arc sine or sine inverse of 0.618. And that's going to give us something in the first quadrant. Make sure my calculator is in degree mode, because it was in radian mode. I 
and I get 38.17 degrees. And so that's right about there, maybe a little higher. Sign's also positive on this side, such that the reference angle would be 38.17 degrees. So consider then, to get that, this angle here, the whole thing would be pi. We'd take away the 38.17 degrees. Not pi, 360, <laughs> sorry. So 360 minus 38.17 is 321.83 degrees. I'm not, not 360, I'm sorry, 180. There we go. So 180 minus 38.17 is 141.83. So right now we know that X is 38.17 degrees and 141.83 degrees. The second case, when we have the negative value, the problem this is going to present, it's going to give us something in the fourth quadrant, it'll give us a negative angle because the range of arc sine or sine inverse is negative, one, or negative 90 to 90. So if I put this in the calculator, sine inverse of negative 1.618 Oh, it's, neg it's undefined. Why would that be undefined? Oh, why wouldn't it be undefined? Sine can't produce something smaller than negative one. Sine produces things between negative one and one. This value falls outside our domain for arc sine, the range for sine. So sine x equals negative 1.618 is not possible. So our only solutions here are 38.17 and 141.83. And that's it for this section. Send me your questions. I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. This I think is such a, it's a great section. It brings together so many things from pre-calculus and the trig that we've learned. Okay, see you guys later.